What's going on guys, Sam here, and in today's video we're going to be covering a little bit about chaos cloth simulations. So our main concern in this video is rendering our chaos simulation with motion blur using the movie render queue. So we're going to be using temporal subsampling. If you don't know what that is, we're going to get into that later in the video. but. The problem with temporal subsampling is that it causes a lot of issues when you're working with chaos cloth simulations. So this video is for anybody who wants to use chaos cloth simulations, but still be able to render with high quality motion blur. And you guys are really gonna wanna stick around to the end of this video because there is a weird buggy caveat to this process that you're gonna need to know if you wanna actually make this work properly. And then I'm also gonna be doing a little bit of a giveaway at the very end of this video that you guys are gonna wanna stick around for. The key is we're going to be using caching for our chaos cloth simulation in order to accomplish this. So what I have here is this little scene that I've created for the Unreal Engine for Filmmakers course. So you can see currently we just have this little animation for this character right here. We've got a nice camera animation here and I've also added some heterogeneous volumes up here that I've turned off because they're very heavy on the scene. So the first thing that we can do is go into our character. Now this character already has Chaos Cloth set up, so I'm not gonna cover the whole setup for how to do that. So I'm gonna hit G on the keyboard and bring up all of the uh, helpers in my scene. And you can see that I have a wind actor right here. So you're gonna find that by simply going to, into place actors and go to wind. And we're just gonna add a wind directional source. These are a good starting point if you want just a little bit of wind in your scene. So let's go ahead and just hit simulate. And that's gonna show us the simulation in our viewport. This wind is now actually blowing this cape around as well as these uh, little shoulder dusters that he has up here. Now we wanna get into what this tutorial is really about. And that is going to be how to render this. So what happens when you go to actually render this is if we go in here and render, I have a render preset set up here already. So when we're rendering something, and I'm using uh, deferred rendering, but this is the same concept with uh, path trace rendering, we're gonna wanna use a higher temporal sample count in order to get high quality motion blur. So temporal samples essentially break up each frame into the specified number of subframes. So in, in this case, 21 subframes. What that does is, like for example, this snowflake that's moving here, um, each frame of the sequence that we're rendering is going to be broken up into 21 subframes and that snowflake is going to move just a little tiny bit in each of those subframes and when those subframes are combined together into the final image by Unreal Engine we see that little bit of movement over those 21 frames all combined together as motion blur so that's how we get high quality motion blur inside of Unreal Engine because otherwise we're going to be relying on the motion blur post-processing effect which is not ideal the problem with that is that when we actually uh, render with with temporal subsamples right here in our anti-aliasing settings. It's going to cause the cape to do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's not going to work right. It's going to jitter because the simulation is taking all of those subframes into account as it's doing the simulation. So the solution is to actually cache the animation of our cloth simulation. So we're going to run the simulation inside of our editor and we're going to actually capture the animation inside of our editor so that we actually have it as essentially an animation asset, the same as the animation asset I have right here for my character, except it's just gonna be the cloth. Then what we're gonna do is because we have that cached, we don't then have to actually simulate the cloth when we render. So it's already pre-simulated, those frames are saved, and it's just going to render them as it should. And then we are able to render with high quality motion blur without any problems. And the way that we do that is with the take recorder. So in a second, we're gonna get into that. But first, chaos cache managers are going to give us the option to control things like the chaos destruction simulations that are available in Unreal Engine, as well as the chaos cloth simulation I'm about to do. So we can drag and drop one of those into our scene, but instead we wanna actually make one based off of a particular actor. So we're going to choose in this case our Revenant character right here and we're going to go up here to actor and remember this will not show up unless you actually have an actor selected in the scene so we're gonna choose actor and we're gonna to go to chaos and then create chaos cache manager now I already have a folder created here called chaos cloth and I'm just gonna save it into that folder and I'm gonna call this CCM for chaos cache manager underscore Revenant underscore v2 so if we search for chaos in our uh, main editor right here 
and we click on it, we can see that we have this cache mode right here. It's set to record. So that's where we want that to be. And we also have our cache collection set as the revenant cache collection we just made. So what we want to do next is actually go ahead and open the take recorder, which is going to allow us to capture and cache animations inside of Unreal Engine. So one important thing just to make sure before we actually get into the take recorder is we do want to make sure that our character is added to the sequence right here and that we have any animations applied to them that we want to. We want to make sure that we do this before we run the take recorder so that we're capturing all of the proper simulation information. So we're good to go there. And now what we can do is go up here and let's also just save this first. So hit save all. You're gonna to wanna to save this often because chaos is kind of experimental right now. So we're gonna go up here to window, we're gonna to go to cinematics, and then we're gonna to go to take recorder. That's gonna close out of the sequence that we had just loaded up. Don't worry, we're gonna get right back into it in a moment. If you've ever worked with uh, Vive trackers, you might have encountered the take recorder previously. It's also used for like Niagara fluids or chaos simulations. Basically a way of capturing live data and pulling it into Unreal Engine and also at the same time caching that data if you choose. We need to open our sequence. So we're gonna click on this little arrow right there and this is where we can open a sequence to record into. And we're just gonna scroll down and find the shot that we need, which is this one in my case. And here we go, we're right back into our sequence. All right, so now we actually need to add the source of our simulation, which is going to be our chaos simulation. So we're going to go down here to source and we can choose from actor and that's what we're going to use. You can also choose like a live link source. That's if you're doing virtual production with like a Vive camera tracker or a chaos cache. We're not going to use that. We're going to make sure that we use actor from actor and then we're going to choose add chaos cache manager to. We're going to click on that and if we go down here to the source actor, make sure that's linked up to the proper chaos cache manager too. All that looks fine. We're going to go down here to our recorded properties and we're actually going to uncheck most of them everything except for the chaos cache track all right and that's just because we want to make sure that we're only really recording the chaos cache track because that's what we're after here that's what we want to store within our sequencer if we scroll down to our take recorder settings we have our recording clock source so there's a few of them that work and, and some of them don't so tick works relative time code i think time code works as well and i know that play every frame works just make sure that your settings match mine here so we're going to start at current time code uh, that's going to start us at the beginning of wherever we specify on the timeline. We don't need to record the time code, but we are going to make sure we record to possessable. So that's just going to make sure we're not like spawning things into the sequencer here. We're actually just recording it into a track. The rest of this stuff we don't really need to mess with. So we're actually going to use relative time code because play every frame is actually going to require you to rescale the size of your chaos animation to fit the timing of, of your animation, which is not a big deal in our case, but if your actor or your character is doing a lot of movements or something and you want it to interact with their movements, that is going to be pretty important that our timing matches up properly. So we're gonna use relative time code because I don't believe we're gonna have to rescale the timing of our chaos simulation once we capture it. With all that set, I think we're about ready to go and move on to actually capturing our simulation. So before we actually capture our simulation, we just wanna check and make sure that this all is good to go up here. We have the red record button, and then we also have our cache mode is set to record in our chaos cache manager. So just make sure you select that in your details panel. And then if, if you go down here, make sure this is set to record. If that is the case, then we are ready to go. I turned off the heterogeneous volumes that I had in the scene because they're really heavy and they slow the frame rate down. So you're gonna wanna disable any processing heavy effects that you might have in your scene just so that we're gonna get a smooth simulation here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, simulate. All right, we've got the wind there and we're gonna hit record on the take recorder. It's gonna give us a nice countdown, two, one, and bam, it's gonna start recording. So you can see it's going through our timeline and recording with the animation right here. All right, it reached the end, so it stopped automatically. Now we can just go ahead and hit stop here on our simulation. So all we did there was play our simulation, let it simulate as if we were playing a game, and then we just recorded the animation for the actor that we specified right here in our take recorder. That's the basic process behind any simulation caching for Unreal Engine. The, the process itself might look a little bit different, but that's the basics behind the concept. All right, so if we go in here, we can now play back our animation and see what we got here. 
At this point, we're gonna wanna save everything, so go file, save all. Now, there's a bit of a caveat with this, and it seems to just be simply a bug with, uh, with Unreal Engine. We actually have to get rid of this chaos track right here, and then re-add it in order to actually save this animation. Because if we go ahead and just go and render this right now, it's actually going to re-simulate it during the render and overwrite this work that we've done here. So we're gonna close out of the take recorder first. Okay, that's the first thing. And we're gonna go into our sequence right here. You can see that we have our nice cached simulation. And what we're gonna do is make sure that we've saved everything. And then we're gonna go ahead and just delete this. But all we're gonna do here is grab our chaos cache manager and we're just gonna drag and drop it right here into our sequence. You don't have to put it under this folder. I'm just doing that because that's how it did it initially. Okay, so we, we're almost back to where we were. We're gonna click on the Chaos Cache Manager and we're gonna click plus track and we're gonna do Chaos Cache right here. Okay, and there we go. You're gonna see that we actually have our Chaos Cached simulation right back in our sequence, but it's a different color. Okay, that's kind of the key. We're just going to extend this out. We now need to, uh, this is just gonna loop right here at this little hard line. So if we watch it, you're gonna see it's gonna snap back. We're just going to undo that. So we're gonna just leave it at its original length. We're just gonna right click on it, go to properties, and then we're gonna go to play rate right here and we're gonna set this down to 0.6. And that's gonna extend that to about the proper length that it should be. Like I said, you're probably gonna have to tweak this a little bit, but now what's good is if we save this, if we close out of this project, we come back in, this is all gonna be stored here and it's also going to render properly. All right, so we have that cached. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and render this. So I've got this render preset set up. What we're gonna do is I do EXR sequence, 16-bit, deferred rendering, you can also use path tracing with this, but when it comes to anti-aliasing, we're going to set the uh, method to none, and we're gonna set the spatial sample count to one, and we're gonna set our temporal sample count to 21. You can set this to whatever you want to. As I said before, the temporal sample count is gonna increase the quality of that motion blur the more you increase it. Color output, I have an OCIO config. If you wanna learn more about the, all of this stuff, I cover it in great detail in the Unreal Engine for Filmmakers course. I'm also gonna be making some videos about some uh, console variables that I've come across that are really helpful for things like heterogeneous volumes, fixing some issues like I had some flickering going on. Uh, so stay tuned for that video. We're going to make sure that we have the game overrides turned on and then we set our output and we're ready to go here. So we can go ahead and click on render, close out of this, and then we're going to click on render local and we're going to get a proper looking final result with high quality motion blur and a chaos cloth simulation that works properly. And also be sure to check out the website. We've got a free Unreal Engine beginner course for anybody that's just getting started. That's going to get you well on your way to creating awesome scenes like this as well as the unreal engine for filmmakers course where we cover everything about this scene as well as several other scenes and then also we have just come out with the virtual filmmakers playbook course which is going to teach you indie virtual production in literally any space we made a pretty massive film inside of basically a closet. It was like a two by two meter space or something like that. And I partnered up with Joshua M. Kerr on that project. It turned out amazing. And uh, if you guys wanna see that, I will leave a link uh, to the video where uh, we talk about that in the description and also in the upper right corner of this video. So I'm gonna leave a coupon code in the description of this video for the first 100 people. It'll be 20% off anything on the website. That includes the Unreal Engine for Filmmakers course, the Virtual Filmmakers Playbook, and even the bundle. Now, if you missed this one, just make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be continuing to release some of these coupon codes just to kind of show my appreciation for you guys' support and to help out anybody who is watching my channel because I really do appreciate you guys checking out these videos. So thanks again for watching and I hope you guys have a good one.